Welcome back. I am very pleased to cover in this video Gradient Descent, one of the pillars of machine learning, control theory, and it has many applications. I used Gradient Descent many times in many research papers, many optimization problems, and training neural networks. All right, so what is Gradient Descent? First, let's talk about the gradient. Let's say we have a function I am going to use the notation from the previous videos, V, that depends on v, uh, W. Let's say W is S by one vector. So we define this function from RS to R. This is a scalar valued function. The gradient of this function is basically D over partial derivative of V with respect to W. And gradient represents the rate of change of that function. What I mean by that? Let's consider a simple example. Let's say our function is 1 over 2 w to the power of 2. In this case, the gradient is basically, right, if you take the partial derivative with respect to w, you are going to get 1 over 2 to w. 2s will cancel out and you will get w. So, for example, if you plot this function, I plot with this blue line, at point 2, gradient is 2, so, and at point 1, gradient will be 1, so gradient at 2 is larger than the gradient at 1. It basically shows the direction that this function grows. If you like, if you like to find the gradient at minus 1, it will be minus 1, but to the, this direction, right, because of the minus. If you find that minus 2, it will be much stronger. So, gradient of V becomes larger as we move away from the origin, for this example. And since V becomes more steep as we move away from the origin. Alright, so we start simple. And gradient descent is essentially an optimization algorithm in machine learning and control theory for finding a local minimum of a differentiable function. Why differentiable function? Because we need to take the derivative. All right, so in gradient descent, basically, the new value of the unknown parameter that we would like to find in the previous video, you may remember, uh, and I will revisit that example, we were trying to fit a line to a given data points. So basically we are going to find it iteratively instead of uh, using the analytical solution and k here 0, 1, 2 natural numbers. So the new value of w depending on the previous w of uh, previous value of w minus learning parameter alpha which is positive multiplied by the gradient. So basically we would like to learn through the negative gradient because again we don't want to move away. If you use negative gradient we would like to find the local minimum. Local minimum. So instead of taking the gradient we are finding the negative gradient. So we are going to descend with respect to the gradient. That's why we have a negative sign here. So this form is pretty popular and um, uh, has a lot of usage in uh, daily research life. All right, so this is the general formula. So let's revisit the example, simple example we have. Let's say if we can find the local, in this case, uh, local minimum becomes global of this function. Remember that it, its gradient was V. I am going to the equation V k minus k plus 1 equals to the previous value minus the gradient. In this case, the gradient is just v, just I am inserting it. I am combining 1 and alpha here, 1 minus alpha multiplied by w. And without loss of generality, let's say we start at w0 equals to 0. This is our initial condition. In the very first step, when k is basically 0, I am using here k0 or v1 this becomes 0 so v1 is this basically and I am inserting the initial condition here which is 2 after I find this I am going to the second step let's find v2 
W2, sorry, I keep saying V, W2. W2 is 1 minus alpha multiplied by W1. What was W1? W1 was here. If I insert this here, I am going to get 1 minus alpha to the power of 2 multiplied by 2. Now I am finding W3. W3 is 1 minus alpha W2. If, as, you, as you realize, I am going to use iteratively this equation over and over. What is W2? It is 1 minus alpha to the power of 2 multiplied by 2. I am taking this, inserting here, I am going to get 1 minus alpha to the power of 3 multiplied by 2. If you repeat this for n or more steps, you are going to get this 1 minus alpha to the power of n multiplied by 2. And you want this to be a convergent function in order to find the local minimum. So you need to choose alpha. So if basically this 1 minus alpha is between 1 and minus 1. This 1 and minus 1 is very important. Don't forget about that. I am going to mention, re-mention about that. It has basically, uh, I am going to use a notion from discrete time difference equations from control theory. If this 1 minus alpha is between minus 1 and 1, then this value will be as we take the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and this will converge to 0, right? So if 1 minus alpha, alpha is between minus and 1, which corresponds to alpha being less than 2, then limit as k goes to infinity, vk is 0. So we are going to converge to the local minimum which is zero and as you see the local in this case global as well is zero we converge to the minimum of this function very beautiful so as this being said don't forget so don't forget if you are watching this video and liking subscribe to the channel for the new content i am going to cover a lot of exciting stuff that you need to know with regard to control theory and machine learning and path planning so on and so forth and turn notifications on and this way you will uh, don't miss the new content because these are the lecture series every video um, i usually post the videos on thursdays and sundays so every video builds generally for uh, based on upon the, the previous video all right now i am going to use this um, gradient descent one of the very fundamental methods for the linear regression and finding I would like to find an iterative solution to the solution to the least squares problem this um, from the previous video I would like to summarize uh, for you in that video for uh, finding uh, fitting uh, data a line fitting a line model to the data um, I formulate the problem like this V is the cost function and this cost function is positive taking r2 because w includes w0 and w1 right let's look at here we have n data points and we would like to fit a line in a in a least squares fashion in this case you can represent this y hat the estimate estimated model as the w transpose multiplied one and x x is the independent variable y is the dependent variable and here is a w we formulate in the previous video linear regression and least squares if you haven't watched I, you should watch this first then this video in that video i was finding the analytical solution here the iterative solution and you may ask uh, if i know the analytical, analytic, analytical solution why should i care about using the iterative solution and this is a very good question but i have a very excellent answer for you just bear with me for a couple of seconds and these are the why and basically in the previous video we take the gradient of v with respect to w we obtained this gradient which was looking like this now i am going to the um, gradient descent equation i would like to insert this uh, gradient that you see here into here and since this has minus sign this has minus sign once you insert it you obtain this expression and i am going to group the terms that depends on w and that doesn't depend on w then you have this final equation you can pause the video uh, steer for a second then continue all right so revisiting the uh, um, uh, 
this question. If you know the analytical solution to the least squares problem, which was this from the previous video, why should we use the iterative gradient descent, right? Um, this one. Why should I uh, solve this uh, iteratively for k equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Okay. And here are the answers. Iterative solution is more scalable than the analytical solution, meaning that if you have um, large data sets that you use for machine learning, uh, you should prefer it using the iterative solution like anyone else. And it is iterative solution is more memory friendly than the analytical solution because um, simply you are solving it like this. Um, you are not taking the inverse or whatsoever. Iterative solution can handle. This is the these two are the generic items that uh, most people mention in mo most videos or textbooks. But these two I, last two items are more important to me for my daily regression and control life, research life. All right, iterative solution can handle changes in the data. So let's say you are doing a prediction, but the data change, right? So if you are running this least squares using gradient descent iteratively, then you can accommodate the new data. So you can make more accurate uh, predictions in the long term. And iterative solution is has a lot of applications to control theory. Um, I used it for constraint enforcement, uh, online path planning, in many places, okay? When the time comes, I'm going to uh, cover all of these. I don't want to give a lot of uh, details right now and bother you, but iterative solution, and this is the discrete, discrete version, at some point I would like to cover the continuous time version as well, both discrete and continuous time uh, iterative gradient descent, um, has a lot of applications to control here. All right. Now, how to choose alpha, right? Um, and a lot of textbooks written by computer science people, if not all, mentions that choose alpha small, then slightly increase uh, until convergence becomes not convergence. So they never give a precise answer. But I am a controls person, I believe in theory, and I believe everything needs to be chosen mathematically. So you don't have to watch, if you don't have to watch right now, take my word for it, I cover discrete time control stability problem on this video on this advanced control systems playlist. It is kind of a half an hour video, it is not my one of my shortest videos, but um, basically, if you have a discrete time system like this, basically v w k plus one system matrix a w k plus b u if you look at this this is a discrete difference equation it is a discrete time system with this being our a matrix here and this being our b matrix here and this being an input to this system so for this case this is two by two later in the videos this will be more than two by two but this matrix has eigenvalues in this case two eigenvalues using the results from this video if these eigenvalues are on the unit circle right this is the real axis this is the imaginary axis this is minus one minus one this is plus one this is j this is minus j j is the imaginary number if your eigenvalues are inside this unit disk, meaning that if your eigenvalues are real like this, they need to be between minus n1, 1, right? Remember this unit disk, if you have a real eigenvalue, you need to be between minus 1 and 1. If you have an imaginary number, imaginary eigenvalue, then its magnitude, its absolute value, meaning that sigma to the power of 2 plus p to the power of 2 1 over 2 needs to be less than 1 if you like this is the um, circle equation right be meaning that if you have a complex eigenvalue then if this condition holds you are basically staying inside unit circle 
to make the long story short, if you um, you can find many more details there, if you don't take my word for it, if you have a real eigenvalue, make sure it stays between minus one and one. If you have a complex eigenvalue for this A matrix, it is amplitude given by this needs to satisfy this condition, okay? And once these, all of the eigenvalues of this, you know, in this case, we have two eigenvalues, two eigenvalues must be inside the unit circle. If this is the case, we say that A is a sure system matrix. A is a sure system matrix. And if A is sure, W converges to its equilibrium point. And equilibrium point is the point where motion stops, meaning that the new value of WK plus one needs to equal to the previous value. So WK equals to WK plus one. What is WK plus one? This guy, I am writing it here, expanding it. And then if you solve basically, right? So you have W, this will cancel out with this. Then if you solve this term multiplied by W and this, you are going to see immediately that WK equals to this guy. So as K goes to infinity, W converges to its analytical solution. So again, too much to handle, I understand, but I need to cover, okay? So you need to, I don't want to give you statements like alpha starts small, then increase, do some arbitrary stuff. This is not my style. And maybe because of that, I will never get a lot of, uh, you know, huge sub subscribers, which is not my aim as well, to be honest with you. I would like to proceed with a focused audience that really like education and research. And I hope you are one of them. If you are still watching video, this video, <laughs> you are one of them. Okay, so basically the punchline is, if the eigenvalues of A is on the unit circle, this gradient descent solution to the uh, least squares problem will converge to the analytical solution as K go going to infinity, meaning iteratively. Perfect. All right, relax. It is time for a MATLAB example, finally. All right. Here are the data points. Here is the omega that we construct for these data points. I am choosing my learning parameter to be 0.05, n is 6. I am checking the eigenvalues, eigenvalue check, and I see that my eigenvalues are in this case real. One of them is this, one of them are that, both of them are between minus 1 and 1. So perfect, I know that this algorithm will converge to its analytical solution. Here is the, I am running this for 500 iterations. This is the for loop. And then the rest is similar to the MATLAB example from the previous video, just for computing the results. Again, I provide the MATLAB um, codes. You can stop the video, get the screenshot, code it yourself. And here are the results. Basically, uh, exact solution, analytical solution that we find was this and that for W1 and W2 from the previous video. Okay, so as you see, we are solving it iteratively. We are doing 500 iterations. This is the evolution of W1 of K as a function of K. And this is the W2. Actually, I both initialized them from zero. I don't know why it is showing here. It basically jumps to here that moves like this. So. After 500 iterations, solution at the 500 iteration for W1 is this one, which is pretty close to this value. And W2 is this, which is close to that value. I am using these values at the 500, uh, after 500 iterations, I am taking these blue values and putting it here, multiplying by one, and then plotting this using these W0, W1, optimal estimates, as you see, we have a nice fit to these data points. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, subscribe, turn notifications on, and we go from there. See you in the next videos.